Okay, we're going to walk you through the steps on how to calculate the mechanical advantage and the drive ratios for a compound machine. And so you want to make sure you go ahead and get uh, this information copied in your engineering notebook. First we have our system here and then we have a table below to put the data. Um, so what we have here is a lever. This is uh, basically a second class lever with the fulcrum right here in the middle. This uh, lever, which will act as a wheel and axle in this system, is attached to a gear, which it's meshed with a smaller gear that also has a lever. All right, and so our effort force is going to be put in right here. On this side of that wheel and axle. Um, the distance to the effort is going to be measured from the center point of the wheel and axle to the outside point and that is going to be four inches and we'll go ahead and label that as the distance to the effort. The gear that the wheel and axle is attached to has 60 teeth and it has a diameter of 3 inches. Down here we have the other gear that's meshed, it has 24 teeth. This gear has a diameter of 1.2 inches. And over here will be our resistance force. And the distance of the resistance is going to also be 4 inches. So get your kind of schematic diagram all done. Make sure you have everything labeled. And then we'll talk about how to um, calculate the uh, mechanisms and the drive ratio. So the first thing we need to calculate is the wheel and axle system. So I'm going to label that system with a 1. So down here on my table, I'm going to put a 1. I'm going to make sure that I everyone knows I'm calculating this as a wheel and axle. And we're going to calculate the IMA for this system. So the IMA is equal to the distance of the effort over the distance to the resistance, which is equal to 4 inches or 4 inches here, so this is our big wheel it's creating that big circle. So really that's just the radius of a big circle. And so the distance to the resistance now for this first system is going to be the radius of this gear. So I can go ahead and put that in this is actually the distance to the resistance right here for that first mechanism and so it's going to be 1.5 which gives us a mechanical advantage ideal mechanical advantage of 2.667 about that so it's about two and two-thirds or it is two and two thirds, about 2.667 though, for using the decimal form. The second system that we're going to calculate, I'm just going to put a two right here, is the simple gear train. So I'll put a two here. I'll call it a simple gear train. And 
and now the gear ratio for that gear train is equal to the let's use the number of teeth out over the number of teeth in so the number of teeth out for this one it should be 24 not 2 24 teeth over 60 teeth which is equal to 0 0.4 so that is the uh, drive ratio for that gear for that simple gear train the third system that we have is um, right here it's the other wheel and axle Again, we're going to calculate IMA for this, the distance to the effort. So the effort's happening right here, and so the diameter of that is 1.2, and so the um, distance to the effort is going to be right here. So it's going to be 0 0.6 because we're calculating that based on the radius of that gear. Over the distance to the resistance, let's go ahead and write it out. Distance to the effort over the distance to the resistance. So the effort is 0 0.6. The resistance is 4 inches. 0 0.6 divided by 4 you get 0 0.5 for the mechanical advantage 0 0.15 sorry for the mechanical advantage for that system so if we want to calculate the overall mechanical advantage of the system the ideal mechanical advantage it's equal to the mechanical advantage of system 1 times the mechanical advantage of system 3. So that's the point I want to make to you that the gear train is not calculated in the mechanical advantage of this system. Just a wheel and axle. So the mechanical advantage of system 1 times the mechanical advantage of system 3 equals 2.667 times 0.15 and we get an overall mechanical advantage of 0 0.4. Now the drive ratio, the overall drive ratio of the system is equal to the drive ratio is equal to the gear ratio of 1, etc. You just it would be a multiplier. We don't have a gear ratio of two. We only have one in this case. And so it's going to be equal to 0 0.4. So there that is. And it's a coincidence that these things ended up the same in this system. All right, the last thing that I want to talk to you about is how we can use these numbers in our uh, system. And so one other formula that we can use is the force out of this system is equal to the mechanical advantage times the force in. And so if we wanted to figure out how much force this thing was pushing out, we would simply figure or measure the amount of force that we're putting into it and so in this case we would be putting we, we could just make up a number like we're putting in 10 pounds of force times the mechanical advantage so the mechanical advantage in this case was 0.4 so 0.4 times 10 pounds
So our force out that we're going to get out of this system is 4 pounds. Okay. Up here we'll do one more calculation for torque. So this is for the gear ratio. The torque out of this system is equal to the torque in or the gear ratio times the torque in. And so if we said that this system had a input torque of a hundred foot-pounds we would multiply that by the the gear ratio or the overall drive ratio of the system which is 0 0.4 times a hundred and so you would get an output torque of 40 foot-pounds so those are two ways that we can uh, look at um, mechanical advantage and drive ratios and use them in our calculations to help us make the design decisions.